With version 1.0 of Sons of the Forest fast approaching, End Night Games have promised even more brand new features, story updates, and the vocal talents of Sean Ashmore to voice everyone's favorite lost lad, Timmy LeBlanc. But with 15 massive patches released so far, there's already so much that's changed since launch. Here are 33 of the biggest and best additions to the early access version of Sons of the Forest. And if spoilers aren't a problem for you, make sure to stick around till the end to see just how much the ending has changed. The opening cutscene in Sons of the Forest establishes your primary objective. As a team of PMCs, you're on the hunt for a missing CEO named Edward Pufton, his wife Barbara, and their daughter Virginia. Originally, both Edward and Barbara didn't make much of an appearance, but the first patch added the two upper-class geriatrics as mid-game bosses, complete with tuxedo, white pearls, and a creepy arsenal of moves that'll keep you on your toes. <laughs> At launch, Sons of the Forest was full of caves and underground bunkers to explore, but the lack of information inside left players scratching their heads as to how these locations connected to the story. With Patch 10, we were finally given another piece to the puzzle. Deep within the already existing entertainment bunker is a brand new introduction video that wasn't there before. This introduces Hollow Springs, a rich person's underground getaway of sorts, offering timeless luxury and timeless youth. How's that achieved? With a mysterious ore known as Solophyte, which supposedly contains anti-aging properties and is also connected to a massive ancient cube that'll soon activate on the island. The more you know, eh? Reset your body and yourself. Time is running out. Book your place now. Hollow Springs. Timeless luxury. Timeless youth. Despite my many, many deaths, End Night Games have been adamant with bumping up Sons of the Forest Cannibal Count with a particular standout, Patch 14, adding in an enemy type called Igor. Yes, they've actually got names. Igor loves sporting a disgusting, fleshy antler crown, perfect for charging right into your face with. Patch 15 added the lovable Elise, who took her Wolverine cosplay a bit too seriously with those bone knives and flashy maneuvers. In Patch 11, they added Eddie, a manic spearman who loves throwing sharp projectiles right at your face. Thankfully, End Knight were considerate enough to chuck in some extra firepower with Patch 7. So when your basic bow isn't enough, the newly added rifle should be your weapon of choice. Equipped with a red dot sight, this bolt-action beast should be more than enough for any hunting session. Traps are the cornerstone of any home base, and while there were a few basic options available from launch, recent updates have come with new blueprints for killer devices scattered across the map. You've got the Grind Trap. Added in Patch 14, this contraption is a gruesome mix of golf cart batteries, wires, sticks, and skulls, producing the ultimate cannibal blender. Next is the Uber Trap. And no, this isn't an evil take on a cab service, but instead an electrified bear trap-esque monstrosity that shocks, burns, and crushes. Lastly, the aptly named Spin Trap, which, well, spins, maims, and decapitates anything that walks near it. Lovely stuff. It might not be the deadliest weapon, but the pickaxe, added in patch 12, has proved itself as a must-have tool. Its introduction brought along with it a new type of ore to collect, a brand new cave to explore, and a mining mechanic as well. And the pickaxe is what ties this all together, opening up the possibility of upgrading your favorite weapons later in your adventure. And speaking about upgrades... With an abundance of new enemies comes greater risks, and Patch 12 balanced the odds back in our favor with the item plate in blueprint. Costing some juicy turtle shells, a few batteries, and a bit of ore, this buildable structure is an essential addition to Sons of the Forest. Once activated, a storm will gather overhead, as repeated lightning strikes melt the ore you've collected, turning your weapons into gold-coated beasts with an insane damage boost. Just be careful, as this process always attracts a few nasties. At release, navigating Sons of the Forest's colossal map was a bit of a challenge, especially as it's roughly four times larger than the original. But arriving alongside Patch 1 was the Hang Glider. This sleek aerial vehicle is a fantastic way to scout ahead, all whilst keeping yourself a safe distance from all those mucky mutants. 
Whether it was the Sons of the Forest subreddit or the Steam discussions page, the message was clear. People demanded drivable golf carts. Originally strewn across the map, wrecked but unusable golf carts were easy to come across. And although they sometimes held useful supplies, they didn't serve much of a purpose. But once patch 7 arrived, all of that changed with golf carts now being drivable. They're a bit tough to handle, but they can certainly pack a punch if a cannibal or two is in the way. Looking suspiciously similar in style to a particular 1982 TV series featuring a talking car, the Night V is currently the fastest way to get around Sons of the Forest's ginormous map. Added in Patch 3, this electric unicycle is small, very quick, and above all, hilarious to use. While not as fast as the Night V or as fun as the Hang Glider, the basic and advanced log sled added in Patch 5 are a welcome addition to anyone's home base. Schlepping two logs at a time is a bit of a pain, so an increased limit of 8 with the basic log sled and 12 with the advanced log variant is a welcome help in hand. Plus, the skull lamps are a lovely rustic touch. So you've spent plenty of time building a traditional wood cabin, and you're proud of it. But it's time to move on, because Patch 3 introduced solar panels into Sons of the Forest, turning your old home base into a 21st century hideout. And it doesn't just end there. Light bulbs, also added in Patch 3, should be a priority when outfitting your home away from home, replacing the earlier caveman-esque lighting setup for something more modern. Even with a few solar panels and as many light bulbs as you can cram into your base, you still need a way to connect them all together. This is where you'll want to use wires, another Patch 3 addition. This item is the final puzzle piece to your electrical grid setup. Unfortunately though, all of those lights will attract some unwanted cannibal attention. But with Patch 8, you can now construct your very own electric fence fortification. And while it's important to have a functional, defendable home, style is equally as important. At release, there wasn't a wealth of options to express yourself, but Patch 13 brought in blueprints for some lovely new furniture like the Gore Chair, the squishy, disgusting throne fit for a cannibal king. But what if you plan on having a couple of guests over? Don't worry, there's also now a Gore Couch. Hopefully, Kelvin approves. Building your dream home is a timely endeavor, and that's why in patch 14, N Knight added in a clock. Chucking together some wire, a battery, a couple of arms, and most important of all, a watch, lets you construct this cannibal-inspired timepiece. Look at it go! If you're looking to spruce up your domicile even further, then the Powered Cross Blueprint is what you're after. Added in Patch 12, this bulb-consuming blueprint, whilst ridiculous, acts as a perfect landmark for any base, especially during the middle of the night. But if you're after a more subtle form of lighting, the leg lamp should do nicely. Added with Patch 15, this gives you another reason to make the most out of the local, fleshy cannibal population. Wait. Are we the baddies? Now that you've fully decked out your home with the local furnishings, it might be time to consider an upgrade. As of patch 6, stones are now a viable resource to use when building a home. Whether it's walls, beams, columns, and more, just make sure to put Kelvin to good use, as this might take a while. Having companions like Kelvin or Virginia barging into your base can get a little irritating, especially when you're trying to spruce the place up. Thankfully, Patch 1 included door locks, a must-have for anyone looking for some peace or a safe night deep in the forest. But what if you're a creature of the night? Well, Patch 3 added a pair of findable night vision goggles to the map. Better than most handheld lights, these battery-powered goggles are extremely useful for cave exploring, hunting at night, and general stealth shenanigans. Another essential viewing tool addition to Sons of the Forest was the inclusion of the binoculars. Added in Patch 1, these should be a top priority find when starting a new adventure, whether it's using them to safely scout ahead or creepily spying on a lazy Kelvin. The Rain Catcher, one of the most useful blueprints one could deploy in 2014's The Forest, has finally made its way to the sequel, with its inclusion in Patch 2. As the name suggests, this handy contraption collects safe drinking water whenever it rains, and at the cost of a single turtle shell and a few sticks, it's worth doubling up when starting out. Patch 5 introduced findable cooking pots, as well as an updated cooking system, meaning there's now more dedicated recipes to whip up, each with their own unique buffs to the player. You've got classics like chicken noodle soup and… Greg? 
Either way, if, uh, if you've got the spare arms, legs, and head needed to put these recipes together, you should be in for a tasty treat. Okay, this next addition might not be entirely useful, but it certainly adds to the atmosphere. Introduced in patch 15 and neatly tucked away at the bottom of the graphics menu is the style toggle, allowing you to choose from a variety of different color grading looks, but we all know that the VHS found footage style is the way to go for any hardcore horror fan. Before we move on, a major spoiler warning is needed. These last couple of points are all about the ending and what's changed. So if you haven't finished the game yet, be sure to stop watching now. Throughout early access, End Night games have continuously improved upon Sons of the Forest, but perhaps most notably, the patches have spruced up its endgame moments. Originally, you'd fight your way through hordes of demons whilst exploring the Hell Caves, watch an absolutely bonkers final cutscene with your companions, and then be left with the choice of either staying behind or escaping with the LeBlancs. That's since changed thanks to Patch 2, and now there's a matchup of Timmy and yourself fighting against a gigantic demon at the end of the Hell Caves. But it doesn't just end there. End Knight saw fit to add another terrifying beast to Sons of the Forest Endgame with Patch 7, quite literally patching in a final boss, an almost Resident Evil-esque tyrant battle involving one of the most squidgy, disgusting enemies they've ever produced. Just take a look at this big lad. What's been your favorite addition to Sons of the Forest? And what are you looking forward to the most once version 1.0 releases? Let us know in the comments below. And for more from Sons of the Forest, make sure to check out our early access review and every ending from the early access release.